Okay, so uh, I think you know today's agenda that you know we want to talk about is the uh, uh, two two components. Uh, one is web app, uh, which you know you can see my screen. So basically, what I have done is I have just put in a, a sample a diagram, uh, which talks about you know the two comp people who are not speaking. If you can put yourself to mute, that will help. And whenever you have any question, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Now oh, I still hear background noise. That's better. Thank you. Uh, so, like, you know, two two things that we want to talk about today. One is. Uh, web app uh, microsoft has something called you know azure web app and uh, then we will also delve into the you know azure sql thing started i will just you know quickly uh, give you a, an introduction in terms of like you know what this component is all about right so what is web app everybody will ask okay you're going to tell me about the web app but really what is web app so web app is a platform as a service from microsoft as uh, if you have heard acronym you know pas so platform as a service uh, basically essentially what it means it means that you know you don't have to manage any underlying infrastructure uh, every uh, infrastructure and everything will be managed by microsoft or you have to just consume the uh, services however you will have to you know implement your own uh, on top of that you will have to write your own own code. So web app is 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 a PaaS offering from Microsoft. Uh, is a platform as a service, uh, or you can say, you know this is meant for hosting your website. So if you let's say if you have any website that you want to host for your company, uh, you will you know make use of web app. So web app is fully managed platform from Microsoft, and this is meant for hosting your website. Uh, you can get a platform Windows platform, or you can get Linux platform. Uh, depending on you know what you want uh, to host your website on so both the both the flavors are available so like you know the linux web app has gone live a uh, ga a couple of weeks back in fact it was there for quite some time but then it has become general available in uh, you know last two weeks so that's that's another you know that it's a hosting platform uh, to host your website in essential if you have worked in uh, you know, server uh, as a server admin sometime in your past, in your career, you would have worked with IIS uh, server, you know, which is a web server running on a Windows box or Apache, uh, similar kind of, you know, on Linux. So here it is like, you know, it is fully managed by Microsoft, underlying infrastructure is managed by Microsoft. You just go ahead, create an instance of web app and start uh, putting your code on it. So it will give you a website which you can use it. The second one is, which is Azure SQL. Uh, it is Azure SQL database. So it is also a PaaS offering from Microsoft. Again, it's the same thing. It's a SQL, but you know you don't have to uh, manage your own operating system. You don't have to install SQL on top of that. You don't have to bring your own license. You just pay per minute or per hour uses of a SQL. Uh, essentially, Microsoft will manage the operating system, the SQL installation, patching everything for you, and you have to just, you know, consume it. Uh, it's 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 a fully managed solution from Microsoft, so essentially you don't have to really worry about the underlying infrastructure or patching any uh, any infrastructure that you have to, right? Uh, so you can say it's a SQL as a service offering from Microsoft. And web app uh, can you can consider web app as hosting as a service. So you have hosting like you know web app. If you will, uh, in real world, a lot of people would have used GoDaddy to host their website. Uh, you, you register your domain name. You also buy a hosting space, or you know there are many hosting uh, parties uh, which which gives you that uh, feature. But now. Uh, with this, you don't have to go anywhere, Microsoft. If you have Azure subscription, or you have, uh, you know, uh, basically, if your company has Azure subscription, you can just fire up a web app, host your code, and you know, start uh, doing testing and uh, uh, uses. So, 
this is this is in nutshell so now i will like you know uh, i'll pause and take any question anybody has any preliminary question about these two components yeah it is previous year just sure. i'm asking me to check it maybe i may be very wrong so you have written a tcp 1443 uh, port right so normally uh, uh, sql server we enable 1433 so, oh sorry yeah that's that's a mistake correct <laughs> that's 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 a good point uh look okay, sure. yeah thanks one four three three or one three six seven is also the, the two additional ports but that's th thanks for pointing out so you have to okay. correct for the, the secondary read only also uh yeah That's correct. So, what is the other port you told? Just I wanted to make a note of for my learning. Oh, uh, it's one three six seven. You can also, uh, I mean, in real SQL world, you can configure both the ports uh, one one three six seven and then one four three three. But okay. in case of Azure SQL, is one four three three port is what we use. <clears throat> okay. All right. So hopefully, you know, I mean, uh, I have given a brief and like, you know, if people, if you have any question, you know, just let me know. Otherwise, what I'll do next is I will go ahead and uh, for uh, demonstration purpose, I will create a sample web app. And uh, we will also do like, you know, uh, uh, we will examine different properties that web app offers for you because there are a lot of configuration settings that you can do in web app and we will also see that website in action so like you know, we will hit this urls that you listed here i mean obviously these urls are already taken because i have created those but you now we will create another url for you and then you can hit those and we will see some uh, you know amira one thing yeah. These two SQLs are there, right? Like the, you said, geographic replication. So, is it a part of cluster or? So, no. Or? So, so, what Microsoft underlying technology is, they use a SQL mirroring. Uh, so, essentially, what happens is. Uh, uh, when you create your Azure SQL database, you have option of turning on this geo replication. So, basically, this is in your, let's say, in America and this is in Europe and for DR purpose, what you will do is you will turn on the geo replication. So what it will do is uh, whatever you write here, this is going to your primary, whatever you write here, you know, instantly, you know, within 30 seconds, it gets written over to the other one. Now. And it, it uh, in the background, it uses SQL mirroring. Okay. So uh, that is because, you know, Azure SQL also. DR, maybe for the, for the DR purpose, right? Yeah, for the DR or uh, sometimes it also happens that, you know, you want to uh, read access. So let's say, for example, your actual transactional database is this, where you put in all the data. Oh. However, you also have an application which will make use of reporting, like right? you want to generate some kind of report and you don't want that reporting component to hit this web, this uh, SQL because it will slow down the performance. It will impact the performance of your, you know, primary replica. So what you will do is instead of that, you will say, hey, you have a reporting need. Please come here. You have, you know, you may be uh, one minute or two minutes behind in terms of transaction, but that's more than sufficient for any kind of reporting task. Okay. So two use cases, right? Uh, one is your uh, uh, DR purpose. You will have, so let's say, you know, your if, if your primary reason goes down, and then you know uh, your uh, you can have another web app uh, basically here. So you know the, which will be talking to this. So and that what happens is at the time of uh, failover or in DR, uh, you will you know make this as a primary. Okay. And uh, is it possible for us um, like a high availability for Azure SQL? Can we create a cluster also in SQL database? So this is this is highly available. You don't have to really worry about it. it maintains six replica. So okay. Microsoft, you know, by default maintains the six replica, uh, three within the data center and, you know, three across the region, depending, it's a premium uh, offering that you get. So you don't have to really worry about the high availability because it's, again, it's a pass platform as a service. So you will not really be bothered about underlying HA. So HA is taken care of by Microsoft. So if one, no. okay. uh, one 
one replica is down, uh, now Microsoft will have five more replicas. Okay, okay. So do we and need to define that or, or it creates automatically? It uh, yeah, now, so you will have to choose your tier. There are different tiers, basic, standard, uh, and the premium, and you know, based on that. But most of the tiers, you will get at least three replica for sure. Okay. 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 So HA HA is inbuilt. If you are in, uh, what do you call it? If you are making use of any platform as a service from Microsoft, right? So HA will be taken care of uh, by uh, Microsoft, and they do it by maintaining at least three replica minimum. Okay. And uh, and you know, depending on what your service that you know that you have taken, uh, it could be. Uh, from three to six replicas. So, so one more thing, I have a question yeah. here. In SQL, you'll use uh, additional storage. Mm -hmm. I mean, the storage. Also, you need to take as a service, or it will be like storage is in world and this SQL. Uh, storage is, is included for you. You don't have to pay anything. So your charge is only for the SQL instance. And they have different tiers, like you have standard tiers and you have premium yeah. standard can give you up to 250 GB of data with the uh, Geo application. And uh, yeah. you can uh, recover. This is what are you storage. So you can, you can go back up to 14 days. Uh, premium gives you one TB. So let's say if you have you know very high requirement and you need bigger database, then you know it's one. In fact, now it has gone up to 10 TB, uh, but that's still in GA the size, and uh, that gives you uh, active Geo replication. Premium. What does mean is means 30 second of delay, maximum 30 second of delay with premium. Okay. And you will also have 35 days of uh, restore capability. So let's say you want to go 35 days back, uh, you will use. Uh, a premium. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, neither, sorry. Neither, just I want to, I didn't get what do you mean by 35? Help me sure. to understand this. So let's say, you know, uh, an administrator did a mistake and he overwrote your data. Okay. Right? So let's say, you know, he over, he over, today is, is, is 8th of April, uh, obviously, India, it's nine. And, you know, he over overwrote your data. Now, you want to go back, you can go back up to 35 days. Okay, so kind here. of rollback. Microsoft think. rollback, yes. So Microsoft maintains backup up to 35 days if you have premium. If it is standard, then Microsoft maintains it for 14 days, and they, they're calling it point in time restore, P-I-T-R. So uh, in case of premium, you will get 35. In, in case of uh, uh, standard, you will get uh, 14 days. And plus, the geo replication of standard will not be active geo replication, which means there will be lag uh, in somewhere four to five minutes. But uh, uh, you will still have the data. But it will not be an active uh, uh, geo replication, uh, which will be the case for premium. And plus, you know, there's a lot of things which Microsoft has added recently, and you would have seen, you know, I have shared those articles in the forum also. Like, for example, the database size, you now you can have bigger database size also. And also, I think uh, uh, you can have now long term retention of backup. So you can have up to 10 years. So, you know, earlier it was only 35 days, right? That's what is, but now you can also have 10 years, but that's still in um, preview. It's not a GA yet. Okay, so any more questions? Before you know, I, I go in demonstration and uh, we see things in action. Yeah, needed, uh, and, I have a question. So basically mm -hmm. somewhere I got a chance to read it that we'll be having an active. So no doubt we can have only one database. And yeah. the second also will be having it. And if Second one will be a little lagging it, and if due to whatever reason first went uh, goes down, then the second one can read from the log of mm -hmm. it, and it can retrieve all the data. So this is the way it works. It so this we have to read from ourselves or the pass itself only it does each and everything from us. Because what I understood from your side that uh, you told that uh, we have to just configure it and it works it. So let me to understand it. 
Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to do anything. Microsoft will take care of you for you, you know, to apply the. You're talking about the log, uh, you know, applying the transaction logs at the, you know, destination. So Microsoft will take care of it. What will be the frequency? Depending on if it is premium, it will be very quick within 30 seconds, and maximum, uh, your, uh, you know, RPO will be 30 second of data loss or maybe one minute in case of premium. But if it is, uh, it's going to be standard. It will be around five minutes. So you will have to tolerate a data loss of five minutes. And it's automatic. So basically, in the portal, when you go to the SQL, uh, you know, if I'll get up, I'll show. So you will have option to configure the secondary replica, and uh, then you will also have option to choose the region, which Azure region you want to put that SQL uh, database in. So you know, essentially, let's say. Uh, if you don't have any geo problem, so and you want a geo DR, so America region like you know, so let's say Azure East, you will have uh, Europe West, or you can have in India Pune or India Chennai, or rather India you won't be able to use. But you know any other region that you pick of your choice, or Singapore or Hong Kong, you know depending on what you want. But it will be automatic. You don't have to configure log shipping. You don't have to configure log replaying. Nothing. Uh, it will be done automatically because it's a pass off. And one more. But one thing, thing to. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, continue. Mm -hmm. Ask your approach. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just wanted to know there is limitations of any instances creating instances. Ah. I haven't really looked into it, but yes, uh, uh, last time I shared you a link, right, uh, yeah, which yeah. has all Azure Azure services limitations. I think you can go up to 50 instance on one SQL the uh, server. Five zero. Okay. Yeah, five zero. So that I don't think you know. Uh, I mean, even beyond that, you know, that I'm just the number I'm making up because I don't have the exact number. I'll have to look it up for you. Okay. Okay. Any yeah, other questions? Yeah, let's just have me asking it that. So you told that. Uh, please repeat the same sentence. I didn't understand properly. Sorry for that. You told so 50, right? his, yeah, his question was how many instance of database I can have under one logical SQL database. So this one you see, right? So this is a SQL Server name. Under that, when you connect, it will show you all the databases. So that instance, how many instance of database that will be. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know the number, but you know, somewhere you, you can check out on the Azure limitations in how many databases you can have. So there is one link uh, which I shared in the last meeting. Sure, thanks. So which can tell you, can tell you like you know. Okay, uh, so let me pull up that. Uh, I think it was here. And this is the you know this is the uh, uh, link that probably I use the most often because this is one page document which lists out all the limitations of Azure subscription, uh, like you know what could be VNet limitation, what could be your uh, all the services basically. So in in our case it's like SQL. So if I get SQL database. So if you look at it, uh, here is what you know. You you get all this. So you have different tiers, right? I talked about the tiers. So you have basic tier, you have standard tier, and then you have premium tier. And then you see maximum database size you can have. Now it's supporting up to four TB the premium. Earlier it was one TB. That has to be. So now they you know update to four TB, uh, not ten TB. It was well, it's four TB. Uh, then. Yeah, I don't know about the you know the number of databases. It's uh, it's unlimited practically because in the background Microsoft has a cluster. You can you can increase you can you know go on creating you once you create one uh, Azure SQL server which is a logical container under that you can you know go on creating databases. I didn't hit the limit <laughs> because I didn't try and plus I don't have my subscription doesn't have which is an MSN <laughs> subscription from MCT uh, doesn't have that uh, you know I couldn't hit that limit. But this is this is a, like you know a very good link to uh, basically keep it handy.
or maybe I'll just paste this link in our chat so that people will have it. Uh, where do I think it is? Okay, so coming back to our uh, diagram, right? So, yeah, uh, any other question? Uh, before you know, we we'll, we go ahead and create an instance of web app and uh, do some demo, and then I also create an Azure SQL and examine the property of web app and Azure SQL. Okay, no question. Then, you know, I will... I'll get into the portal. So uh, I know most of you were there in the last session, but you know, if you're not, uh, if you want to configure anything on Azure, uh, you'll have to hit the portal.azure.com. That's where you know uh, your uh, you will start uh, uh, consuming Azure resources. So Azure is Microsoft public cloud offering. You need a subscription. Either you have a, your company has a subscription as enterprise enrollment account. Or if you, it is personal level, if you have signed up for a, a trial, you will use that account to log in. Or if you have a kind of like, you know, if you have MSDN license, you can use an MSDN license uh, to activate. MSDN license gives you 100 or 100, depending on what kind of license you have, $100 or $150 of credit per month. So in my case, you know, I have this MSDN, which I received, uh, because I'm a Microsoft certified trainer. And so uh, I receive, uh, being uh, an MCT, I receive MSDN subscription, so which gives me $100 credit per month, so which is sufficient for doing most of the stuff. So coming back to uh, how to provision a web app, right? So you know, uh, uh, by the way, in the web app is part of a broader offering from Microsoft, which is called App Services. If you look at on the left side, uh, you have App Services. So if you click on this, what you will see is uh, under the uh, app services, this is what I have created. However, you know, there are, there are various uh, app services that you can have, which I don't want to touch upon today, but you have web app, you have API app, you have mobile app, you have logic app. So, you know, those are different kind of apps that you can configure. So uh, probably today we want to concentrate uh, focus on web app and, you know, in future session, if we have any, uh, time then we'll cover other apps but today you know we are going to create a web app so if you see you know just you can come here and then click on plus and if you don't uh, remember the name uh, you can just type here or you can come in web and mobile and here you can see you have web app right so all this is this is part of app service uh, offering so you have web app you have logic app you know which is for uh, building the logic the business logic that you have then you also have web app on linux you know what i as i said it is still in preview but uh, once it goes live you can have it uh, you, you also have the api app services uh, environment i don't know how many of you know uh, uh, there is an offering premium offering from microsoft which is called app service environment which is a dedicated platform as a service for microsoft so this path that we are talking about it is shared by multiple client basically you know microsoft will have one hosting platform or you know set of servers uh, you are one customer you know there are 10 customers like you who will be utilizing the existing platform but if you have a requirement to have your dedicated pass wherein you yourself will host 50 plus websites or so uh, you can uh, buy something called premium offering of web app called uh, application service environment ASC, which is very expensive but you know, if you have to 50 website to be deployed, it will be dedicated infrastructure for you. Uh, you know, you will get uh, two to four, at least four server, four node up infrastructure for you. But again, that infrastructure will be fully managed by Microsoft. You will just you know host your website. But today, you know, we'll just go ahead and create one web app. So I say web app. So it will here it will ask you for the your web app name or your website name. By default, Microsoft has Azure Websites.net. Uh, as you know, uh, it's uh, append. So basically what will happen is any website that you create will have a common URL for you created. So you don't need to register. So you know, in, in regular world, you will go and have your code already. Obviously you will write your HTML file and everything. Plus you will also have to have a hosting space. Hosting spaces you buy from other. 
plus you will also have to register a domain name right so you go to godaddy or any any other uh, host getter or any other domain registrar with there you register your domain name of your website like azure.com or microsoft.com that's a one domain name but in case of web app microsoft gives if you're doing a testing you really don't need a domain name and you can utilize microsoft domain name which is uh, by default azure websites.net and then you know you whatever name you will give to your application or your website that will get uh, appended uh, in front of the azure websites.net so let's say if you have if i create uh wow azure by the way i have already taken that so basically what it will do is it will uh, do a name search and see if it is available within this domain name so obviously i have already created one so i will say wow azure one so essentially your website name is going to be wow azure one dot website azure websites dot net uh, it asks you for subscription. If you have multiple subscription, it will list you those subscription. Uh, I have multiple, otherwise you, know, you will see only one. Then, uh, in a, which resource group this is going to be? So when I say resource group, as the last time also I said resource group is as is, is, uh, administrative boundary. You, you group all your resources related to an application or to one function. There are various ways to group your resources. So one way to group resources is, uh, let's say you have application all the component related to let's say tax application you will club all together in one resource group so you will have tax resource group under that you will have sql db you will have web app you will have your cdn you will have at azure traffic manager everything which is required and necessary for that application you can put in that resource group. that's one way second way is you know you can if your organization has the administration work in that case you can you can have like uh, network resource group where you all your networking component vnet subnet uh, nsgs uh, you know the azure traffic manager load balancer everything goes into that uh, you have storage group where you know you can have all your storage azure blob storage vhds storage accounts table file anything and everything related to storage you can put in there uh, you can have you know your uh, um, network, uh, you can have your compute uh, resource group wherein you put in all your computes if you have a compute team which takes care of. So, you know, there are ways to organize your resource group. Uh, you have to be creative and it will also, you will be constrained by uh, what's the need, business need in your company and how you want to organize it. But in my case, you know, I've just uh, restricted it to the, uh, my application that I have. I've just created one. I already have a resource group or you can create a new one. Uh, so in my case, and I already have a resource group called Wow Azure, so I'm using that. The next thing is the application service plan. So basically, this is where you will choose uh, what kind of uh, you know uh, plan or offering, different offerings that you have. Web app has different tiers, and you know depending on that tier, you will get different features, right? Uh, so this is where you'll have to choose your uh, plan. So when I say plan, uh, you know, in terms of your, uh, uh, will it be basic? Will it be premium? And then your different features. And if you really want to get into further details, what it offers, uh, like, you know, some of the basic is like it is shared, uh, which is free. So, you know, you don't have, but you cannot have your custom SSL or CL. So I will show you what I mean. So if you, if you come here and if I say, instead of using this, I say create new, and here I'll say, ah, wow, Azure service plan. Uh, location, uh, this is your where uh, your servers or your hosting platform is going to reside. So it's South Central US. So you know Azure has different regions. So depending on where you want to host it, uh, and where your user base is, you know, the closest location you will choose. So if you have users in uh, UK, you will select UK West or UK South. If you have users in, uh, Europe, you will select North Europe, West Europe. If you have users in US and also in, in central part, you will select in central part. If you have users, more users hitting from West Coast, you will go West US, right? So depending on, so I will just leave the uh, you know uh, default one. Now this is where your pricing tier comes. In. So if you look at it, uh, let me pop it up. Yeah. So you can look here. Uh, you have premium. You have standard, you have basic, you have free, and you have shared. 
So essentially what happens, you know, if you look at in free tier, it, I'll start with in the free one. So free tier, it gives you one GB storage, but you know, you cannot have your custom domain. That means that you cannot have your own domain. Uh, you will have to use continue using Azure websites.net, uh, which Microsoft is gonna give you. Plus, uh, you know, you will not have SSL support, uh, which means, you know, you cannot upload your certificate and make it an HTTPS website. You will have to continue using it as non-SSL. So that's where it is shared infrastructure, uh, the free infrastructure. In shared one, it will be shared platform, uh, which means, you know, other customers will also host your, their website. However, uh, you get another additional feature is that, you know, you will have custom domain. So when I say custom domain, you can have like, you know, uh, your own wowazure.com. You know, you don't have to use Azure websites.net uh, a trailing URL. Uh, you can have your own, but again, you don't get SSL facility, right? So you will not, uh, obviously in today's world, nobody wants a non-SSL website. So essentially, at least you will start with the basic, which gives you uh, different course if you look at you know depending on what your is, is, is going to be hit or you're going to a target you can size it and depending on so if let's say if you go with basic two you get two core uh, CPU with 3.5 dB of RAM here you get 10 GB storage plus custom domain which you know you get supported which is also then shared but you also get uh, you know SSL support which means you know you can upload your certificate so in terms of the scaling, you can set up, you know, manual scale. You can go up to one, two, three websites, but it doesn't give you auto scaling. Auto scaling is something where you know you can monitor the website health, and if website is hitting certain threshold in terms of utilization, you can, uh, you know, uh, the Azure will automatically spin up another instance for you to take care of that extra workload. So that you will not get in basics. If you need that, though, basically you will come to standard. So standard, what the standard gives you, obviously what you know, basic is offering uh, your, uh, uh, with increased storage and also custom domain SSL support, which, which we were getting here. Additionally, you also get auto scaling feature, which I talked about. So basically what will happen is it will automatically, you, you can set the auto scaling and the system will scale up and scale down basically on its schedule or the monitoring a performance monitor that you configure. You also get daily backup. Microsoft will perform backup. In this case, basic, uh, you will have to have your own custom code to export your website content and then perform that backup. Uh, you also have deployment slot. I uh, So deployment slot is something uh, which is like, you know, very useful if you're a, if you're a developer and you have different stages. As a developer, you will start with Dev, QA, UAT, and and you know production. So you know any testing that you have to do, you do in Dev, and then you upgrade it. You know everything is fine. Then you go in QA. Then you upgrade it from QA to UAT, UAT to uh, finally to production. Uh, so basically, in deployment slots, you can what you can do is you can have five deployment slots, as is mentioned, and you start with Dev, and you, everything is fine, is good. You can do a whip swapping and make the development one as a QA. You do you know all your testing in QA, and then you do a whip swap and upgrade that uh, uh, you know QA one to UAT, and you do all the performance you know all all UAT use acceptance testing everything in UAT, and, and do a whip swap, and it becomes a production. If there is a problem in production, and you know you want to revert back, you can swap between UAT and prod, so your prod becomes UAT and you make all those changes and UAT becomes prod so you can you know still continue your business so that's something you will get in the standard plus uh, uh, you will also have the uh, feature called traffic manager so you can load balance your web app using traffic manager so what it does is traffic manager is something you can uh, say GSLB global server load balancer uh, so what it can do is you can have your uh, two web apps, one sitting in America and one sitting in Europe. And uh, if you're, you want to have DR, your users, you can load balance that using Azure Traffic Manager and your user will hit the Azure Traffic Manager. And Azure Traffic Manager will intelligently route the user depending on where they're coming from to the closest location. So if you look at here, I have, you know, I have shown the Azure Traffic Manager over here, right? So this is supported uh, only in the, you know, uh, 
uh, higher tier it is not supported in free or shared tier at least in a basic and above so you have different load balancing method that you can configure you know we'll talk about this later but uh, this is just uh, this is what the traffic manager is so traffic manager uh, is is a kind of intelligent name resolution system which you know monitors health if you have two web apps it will keep monitoring the health of both the web app if let's say america web app is down it will redirect the user to uh, europe so there are various ways to configure its load balancing method uh, but uh, just to keep in mind if you if you want to leverage manager then you you need to have at least standard and ever basic doesn't support uh, uh, you know uh, atm a traffic manager right uh, then you have premium now if you go in premium you have you know p1 p2 p3 and p4 it is not shown here because p4 is application service environment which is a dedicated one for you so in case if you go with the premium basically what you get is you get obviously your storage gets upgraded to 250 gb which you see here also you know your auto scaling which is you can get instead of 10 you can get up to 20. Uh, plus, you know, the uh, as I said, the deployment slots. So in deployment slot, you had five, you get 20 deployment slots. If you're heavy, your application is really heavy and doing a lot of testing, you know, then in, in that case, you will benefit it by going to the premium. Uh, traffic manager support, it is there in the same. Plus, you also have increased backup. So it's like a frequency is 50 times daily instead of just uh, one backup uh, daily over here. So these are some of you know the differences that plus one more thing to talk about if you're looking to integrate it with the Bizstock services then you'll have to go with the premium so Bizstock is something we'll talk about VNet integration um, so VNet integration or let's say if you have a web app and uh, you have a SQL running on IS box and you want to communicate or you want your web app to talk to IS SQL server then uh, you will need uh, this BizTalk service for that integration purpose or uh, uh, there are various ways to perform that. One is VNet integration, one is BizTalk. But you know, if you're looking at this, then probably you will go with the premium. Okay, so today for demonstration purpose, what I'm going to do is I will select the basic one. Okay. Uh, so that I will we'll see most of the attributes, and uh, uh, I will not go with the standards. So obviously, if I have to, sh when we'll cover the demonstration for traffic manager, you know, we can always upgrade. It's not about you can upgrade and downgrade at any point of time, you know, as per your uh, convenience. So I will say select basic. So it's all done. Uh, so this is my service plan right so this is the service plan which will control if i build new website so it will inherit the same you know pricing tier for me so name is done uh, my subscription is done now uh, well, where i should that's the resource group uh, this is my service plan and then you have something called application insight so application insight is like you know if you want to monitor the health of your application uh, that you can turn on and when you turn it on you know you get charged for it but uh, but if you don't want to then you know you can just put it up so i will not create i will not just turn it on i'll go ahead and create one so you can see it's uh, deployment is in progress it will take some time to provision it once it is provisioned then you know probably if we hit the website you will be able to see the website and the url for the website is going to be So obviously it's getting provision but i want to show you, you know the one that i have already set up so this is what uh, this is actually actually websites.net which is a, a native url which you get uh, uh, you know and once it is provision you can whatever you make modification you can hit from anywhere and you will be able to see your website so let's see what is the status okay that's done so now if i go ahead and make it one It will show your default web page. 
right so you see this is this is what i provision how quickly it is so if you have your own code uh, you know you can go ahead and deploy it and it's up and running within minutes uh, and you know you can start doing your test so let's come back here and i'll go in my all resources and let me click on the web app left side it will show me all the web app so this is my wow i assure one which is i've created and you know one one you see already there which you know i have created in uh, for my own purpose but uh, uh, this is what we have created so if you come here we will examine the properties what all configurable properties you have uh, which you can you know see this so obviously you know the overview section you have all this, you know, you can stop the website, you can browse, which you hit the website, or, you know, from here also, you can click on browse, restart. You want to delete it, you can delete it. We don't want to do anything. Plus, this is the console where you have all the uh, pricing tier. You can see is a basic one small, and then this is the URL that you have. Uh, I will come into, you know, something called, uh, if you look at it, you have something called deployment credentials. So what happens is, uh, let's say if you want to deploy, uh, this is the FTP user. So if you have GitHub or FTP, and you want to deploy from there directly, push it. So this is where you will configure your uh, FTP deployment username and password. So once you configure this, you will go in your GitHub or your FTP client, and you know put in this uh, username and password. That's how you will start deploying it. I talked about the deployment slots. Uh, you, you see, I don't have add slot because I selected a basic one, right? So basic uh, doesn't have the deployment slot, but if you had a premium or uh, the higher version, in that case, probably you will get the uh, our standard if you had, I selected basic one. So if you had standard or premium, you will get an option of adding slot, uh, which which you can use for prod, QA, UAT, and uh, subsequent uh, testing. Uh, you have a uh, deployment option. You can configure, you know, how you want to deploy the code to this website. Uh, like, you know, there are various, you can configure those sources. So basically it will automatically uh, publish, you know, from there you can put it. So you have like, you can use your Visual Studio Team Services if you have content out there, or you can push from OneDrive, or if you have local Git repository, from there you can push the code here or the GitHub, a Bitbucket, or, you know, any other kind of. So this is basically to, you know, uh, push the code to this website, how you want. So these are the different integration points that you have that you can configure. Okay, so let's come back. <laughs> uh, continuous delivery, this is, uh, I think, you know, this is, uh, still in uh, as i said it is still in uh, it is it is in uh, preview where in like you know you can code build and deploy test so it's 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 a it's a typical DevOps life cycle you know that you do so you can do it through visual studio team services uh, which is very useful but uh, this is a preview feature which is need to be uh, become a gear now here you come the custom domains right so let's say you have created if you already have a domain name, uh, you can come over here and you know you can add that. If you don't have, you can also buy a domain here from Microsoft. So Microsoft will get you a domain name that you can do it. Uh, if you don't have, you've already bought it. So you know from here you can come and configure your uh, uh, domain name. So currently you see the host name that is listed here is wowashu.azurewebsites.net. Uh, but you know if you have your domain, in that case you can add your domain here. And uh, that will essentially is going to be your own website, you know, something like wow azure.com if it is available, right? I don't know if it is available or not, but you know, or any something like you know your your fancy website.net or something or cloudguru.net, you know, something that sort of uh, domain that you have. So you, here you will come and configure that uh, this domain name. Obviously, I don't have any domains. Uh, which belong to me, or I don't have any. Bought, I, I haven't bought anyone. Otherwise, I could have gone in and you know, shown you the demonstration. 
Then you have SSL certificate. Uh, you know, uh, you want to secure your website, so you'll have to buy an SSL certificate from any of the public authority. Public certification in could be in trust. Uh, there are many which which provides you that. So you can add your SSL yeah, binding over here. So regarding this SSL yeah. certificate, uh, so does Microsoft also provide, or need to put in? Okay. Uh, I don't think so microsoft uh, has a certification public certification authority that they're selling so you have to buy your own yeah, otherwise yeah. you will see uh, like you know in case of the domain name you could see right you have buy domain but mm -hmm. in case of ssl you don't have buy ssl i'm not sure i need to check on that but it looks like it microsoft uh, doesn't provide that but you can buy ssl certificate from uh, interest or there are many, many, you know, registrars, public uh, certification authority from there you can buy. And it costs you somewhere $50 per annum, if not mistaken, around that $50 to $70. Yeah. So this will depend on, you know, uh, you want to secure a website, so then obviously you'll need the SSL certificate. Yeah, needed, as by my understanding, we get it from Microsoft also. Yeah, uh, yeah, so that is for Azure websites.net. So if you uh, if you don't change it, so for example, right? So here if you are, and if you're using Azure websites.net, and if I come here, I have it. I will show you what I mean, right? So you see secure. If I click on this guy, uh, where is my? Secure connection, learn more. Ah, I can see my certificate here. Just hold on. Where is my certificate? Should have a lock. Oh. I can see this certificate. So I, what I oh, I mean I probably I could have pulled it, but anyway, what do you see here? Over secure. This is this is you know the. <sighs> certificate that you will see and this is a wildcard certificate basically i wanted to show you that and i don't know how do i get hold of the certificate it's a wildcard certificate so let, let me do this i will open here in the internet browser then probably i can show you So if you look at this certificate, right? You look at this. This is this is issued to asterisk.azurewebsites.net. It's a wildcard certificate. So anything which inherits azurewebsites.net can make use of this certificate and can be secured. So by default, yes, Microsoft gives you this. If you are using their URL, but if you go with your custom domain, in that case, you'll have to buy your own certificate. This is what you were referring to? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yes, you will get it. So, if let's say, you know, as a company, you will not, uh, you know, like to use Azure websites.net because it's a corporate branding. So, for example, any company you have, like, you know, you will use your own company URL, right? Uh, you will use hp.com or microsoft.com or, you know, uh, ibm.com, you know, your tax.ibm.com, whatever it is. But, you know, you will not inherit that. So, basically, what I'm saying is, yes, you will have uh, by default access because it's a wildcard certificate. Uh, and your all your website using that will be secured. Uh, but, you know, that's when you're using azurewebsite.net default URL. And uh, uh, 
if it is about corporate branding you will never use it you will use this only for testing QA and dev purposes you know not even in UAT you will use it uh, because you you don't want people accessing your corporate website uh, internet facing using you know which has the azure website.net I can use it because for my personal purpose but you know uh, for uh, there's one more thing I just wanted uh, to know suppose uh, my uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Uh -huh. my exist existing website is in some other with other ISP like GoDaddy I just want to uh, move those to yeah. Microsoft or import it to the Microsoft that can be done yes you can do it so basically you will have your own set of code right so you will come here and you will deploy your code here and plus you will bring your domain so basically when you go to any of the provider what do you do use buy two things that you do one you do when you do is you buy hosting space you say hey, I need 5 GB with you know database feature or whatever it is plus you also say that I also need a domain name for my website so uh, Typically, that is also a domain. GoDaddy is also a domain registrar along with the hosting provider. No, just we want the domain because like our company. Yeah, so that you can do. Yeah, here you can do it. Yeah. You know, if you click on add host name, there is a, a option to. You have to basically verify that domain name over here. And how do you do that? Is you create a TXT record which Microsoft will when you click on this add host name Microsoft will let you do that so basically what's gonna this is what validation is so once you put in the host name you'll have to create a txt record uh, in your domain which your domain registrar has given and that will get verified for you and then you can utilize that so you don't have to migrate your domain name from there only the code a hosting space you will do away with the hosting space you don't need it because this is going to be your hosting space uh, but you can inherit the domain name. Uh, you don't have to change your registrar, DNS registrar. Uh, you have to just create a TXT. There is a complete process how to verify your domain name and how to prove that you're owner of that domain name. Uh, this is what you will have to create. So basically, what you will have to do is uh, you will have you will go in your uh, uh, registrar or DNS. There you will create this IP address with this. A host record, a record, or txt. Txt record is also fine, which will prove your domain. But this IP address is given to the host name what you have created, right? Uh, this is yeah. This is this is for the this Azure website. Yeah. So suppose I create for a custom domain name. So, and I have a separate IP address. So can I put in here so that it gets registered in the uh, DNS of my this Azure? Uh, so your DNS it's is belong to your DNS registrar, correct? Yes, so your GoDaddy. You have to go and in GoDaddy and you have to update this IP. Oh okay. Oh okay. So that way what will happen is you will you whenever somebody tries to resolve that name, it will come to this IP. And plus also here, you know, Microsoft will not let you use anything until you validate it. So basically what will happen, there is a come I can pull up that article. So you have to go create a TXT record in the DNS registrar so that Microsoft knows that yes, this belongs to you, and then you know complete process, and then after that uh, you will be able to uh, use that custom name. Okay. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, you right. uh, DNS. Yeah. So this you can follow this article, you know, for uh, uh, creating custom domain names. So if you come here. This is the A record that we you know we're talking about that you'll have to create in your uh, TNS registrar that you have, but uh, and you can also create a CNAME record. So this is a complete process that you know you can follow. Uh, so this is what you have to do. So log into your DNS registrar website, uh, name server. Uh, in fact, uh, there is one. Um, uh, TXT record that you have to create to prove that you are the owner of that domain. So there is a whole, you know, the complete steps that you need to follow to prove and to, you know, to activate your. It's, it's, uh, it's going to say like SPF record or something to say, right? 
Uh, not SPF. SPF is for spam. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, yeah, on on the same same line. So let's see. I should have TXT record here, or you'll have to create a record. Uh, you'll have to. Uh, this is going to be a record. But anyway, no, Microsoft want you to create an A record that you can create for them. But but this is how you will you will follow. So you just follow this article, and you know, then you can enable the. Okay. okay. You don't need to buy custom domain name or migrate over here. All right, so I'll move on to the SSL certificate. I think you know we talked about that. You can add your. Uh, next is networking, and this is where it comes very pretty. Uh, in. Uh, please paste the URL so that we can refer it. The DNS URL. Okay, sure. Sure. Okay, so uh, networking tab. So under networking tab, uh, uh, you see three different options. Uh, VNet integration, uh, hybrid connection, which uses BizTalk uh, to configure the settings uh, that you have. And then you have AAC that I talked about. So obviously this is not an AAC, so that's why you don't see that it says it's not an AAC, so you don't have that option. But I'll talk about the VNet integration in hybrid connection. So essentially, when would you use or when would you make use of this tab? So let's say you have a web app. I'll come back to this. So you have a web app, right? So currently what you see over here is uh, you see your Azure SQL, which is also a PaaS offering, which is a public endpoint. But let's say if you have you know, something uh, this sort. So you have got your web app. Uh, let me put in a web app here. Okay. So this web app well, is, is, is internet facing, right? Now this has an endpoint which is internet accessible. Now if you want this web app to come and connect to your machine or a VM that is running a SQL server, let's say, you know, you're not using a make of a platform as a service a SQL server, but rather you, are, you have a SQL server which is running on a VM, which is infrastructure as a service, and you want to connect to that. How would you achieve that? So this is essentially, this is a pass endpoint. This is a public endpoint. So you are accessing through public. Now this guy has to come over and access this, which is sitting inside your VNet or inside a subnet. So you need some kind of way because it's 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 incoming call. Basically, web app is trying to reach to this guy. It's not other way around. If it's, if it's other way around, you know, there's a VM over here has internet connectivity can reach out to public endpoint. But when a public endpoint, which is a web app, wants to come back into your private subnet or into a VNet, uh, which is an isolated container for all your uh, resources, in that case, you will have to set up configuration. Uh, and that configuration will be needed if you had a SQL server running on an IAS box. Or you have a SQL server which is running you know, inside a subnet. So essentially, if you come here, if you look at it, you know, it talks about the VNet integration. Right? So there are two ways you can achieve that connectivity. One is by VNet integration. So what VNet integration will do for you is it will create a site VPN. Now, what is point to site VPN? So essentially, uh, what it's going to do is you will have your VPN gateway over here, which you see, right? So from here, it will create a tunnel. 
and this tunnel is going to be p 2 S point to site basically from here it will install you know uh, it will utilize this uh, uh, VPN client which will get you know uh, somehow installed magically <laughs> on the web app server now this web app server by help of point to site VPN uh, which is you know you have a VPN gateway sitting in your VNet can talk to and for this you need to have a VPN gateway minimum otherwise you know this will not work because VPN gateway is where you will have your VPN devices at least one VPN device you need a VPN gateway instance you need so if you use VNet integration so VNet integration backbone technology is uh, it will establish a point to site tunnel IPsec tunnel or VPN connectivity which will let this web app have visibility into your VNet over here so that's something you know uh, that one choice we have that is you know vnet integration right so if you go with the vnet integration the traffic will come over here it will be a point to site it will come over here it will be p2s point to site vpn and from here it will get routed to your depending on you know which subnet it is it will come here so that way uh, you know it's the same uh, like anybody would use on their developer laptop so they will install a uh, small vpn client and then they will set up a point to site vpn client uh, to azure right there are two ways you can connect to azure if you're using vpn one is site to site vpn where you have on prem you have routers and vpn devices which is and then you uh, establish the connection between on prem router and uh, azure vpn gateway if you're a small developer, you know, a couple of team members who are who want access to this environment, in that case, you will set up point to site VPN, uh, wherein they will Microsoft will let you download one VPN client, and that VPN client will connect to uh, VPN gateways, uh, which is sitting in Azure. So essentially, VNet integration is using point to site in the background, right? That's VNet integration. Uh, if I come back here, so that's that's where you will configure. So if you need that kind of integration, hybrid topology, you have your web app and trying to access any resource within your uh, VNet, then in that case, you will set up this VNet integration. There is another option which is called a hybrid uh, connection, which is uh, it 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 makes use of uh, Bstock, uh, it's a Microsoft offering from there. You can uh, use that. And remember, see this, uh, VNet integration is not available if for, you know, basic. It's available from a standard premium. That's what it's asking me to upgrade it. Uh, in hybrid connection, uh, essentially what will happen is you will have a middleman. So if I come over here, so this is how it's going to work. So let's say if I have... Okay, so I will take a so let's say this is going to be instance. So this web app is going to go and talk to this Vistock server. And this guy over here, uh, this guy. So, BizTalk is going to be a middleman for you. You know, it's sitting in between the web app and the uh, your. Uh, you know, web server uh, or your IS server, uh, infrastructure service with a SQL running on it. So this guy has outbound internet connection. It will go and talk to the BizTalk, and then BizTalk in turn will relay the message to a web app. Rather, it will be other way around. So it will be something like web app will talk to the BizTalk and say, hey, I need uh, this, let's say, you know, I need to run this query against the database. I will, you know, talk to the BizTalk. BizTalk will, you know, uh, this server over here will have, once we configure the, you know, BizTalk integration, it will, you know, have a frequent access or maybe every 30 second or every 10 second, it will, you know, continue to access the BizTalk. And then from there, it will take the command and uh, generate the result and then 
post it to BizTalk and then BizTalk. So it's like, you know, basically a middleman is going to, you know, for you. If you don't want point to site VPN for any reason, for security reasons, so you can use BizTalk uh, to achieve that integration. If you have any uh, web app, which is public in point, uh, wanted to come into your uh, VNet, where you have VMs residing, it, it could be, you know, you can have your uh, uh, business logic, you can have your, you know, uh, your web, you can have your database servers uh, running on a VM. It could be anything. So depending on what your use cases, you can use uh, these two integrations. So these are the two integrations, right? You know, we talked about. Any just question to, on this? Yeah, sure. So just to update uh, team. So suppose we are going with hybrid model due to whatever restriction we are planning to have a database into our on premise. Just to think that. In India, we wanted to keep data into on premise only, our Indian boundary. So then, and we, are, we have a web app into outside India, then we can go and use the hybrid connection. Am I right? Nira? Correct. Yeah, that's also one of yeah. That's also very very good point. That's one of the also use case. So like, uh, you know, uh, right now I. I shown Biz Talk talking to you know Azure, but let's say you know the same guy can be in your on prem. Right? And this is how you can achieve. This is what you know. Uh, Prayesh is referring to. So basically, what will happen is, you know, without exposing your uh, database server, uh, you can achieve that integration. So basically, web app can come into and talk to your database servers via help of BizTalk, which is the hybrid integration. So you know both the both the use cases is possible. In that case, you know you won't you won't allow the your website to initiate an inbound connection to your server which is sitting on prem. In that case, it will be stock. So it's the same service you can also utilize in when you have that you want to achieve that integration in VNet. You know it's it's almost uh, same, but uh, for on prem, uh, you will certainly make use of this and you will not allow inbound connection directly to this database servers. Thanks, Prish, for bringing it up. Any question? Yeah, so just I need to say something. Uh, Neeraj, when we are doing it right, when we're setting a uh, Azure SQL server, I hope mm -hmm. as on today, so we have to go only, just we have a requirement of data residency. What I'm trying to say, if our requirement is there that- data you're, talking about, you're talking about data privacy. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm talking about the data privacy. Yeah, so if- mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so if you are, if you have data privacy, you know, probably you will not configure uh, what you see over the uh, geo replication. Even if you configure the geo replication, you will maintain it within the same geo. So like you will have South Central, North Central, the US. So that you know it is in the same. You don't go from one geo that is America South Central to Euro West or Europe North, right? So that you know data is is within the same uh, geo or at least in the same uh, um, country. Yeah. So you can do that. Yeah. So Neeraj, what I wanted to say is right. So going forward, we'll be doing that same only when we'll be having a Azure SQL database. We'll be doing it. So as of in India, if we are getting a requirement to have a data privacy, mm -hmm. that means our data should be into Indian boundary only. So if you are going to select a database, so there we are uh -huh. getting only Asia Pacific. Am I right? We are not getting uh -huh. the that we can go and select that a data boundary should be uh, yeah so india is something different i will come to that later you know <laughs> we are still trying to figure out so india subscription is so right now in global azure you don't see uh, india data centers exactly so we can have the nearby ah, so, specific. so still if you have a data yeah. privacy tool like data residency then we have to we don't have any option we have to go with uh, on premium database only am i right uh, so see it will depend on what kind so let's not talk about India okay so let's talk about if I have a data privacy concern I want to maintain the data uh, there are two kind of concerns that we can address one is it has to be in the same country you know, it doesn't go out in that case you know this will fulfill satisfy my requirement but if there is a further contractual obligation as in who will have access to underlying infrastructure 
and it should be commanded by our company, then this will not fit in because the underlying infrastructure is maintained by Microsoft. So there are various you know, uh, data privacy obligation that you have to look into. If it is only obligation that the data has to be in the same region, it doesn't go out, then fine. TD, you can enable TD, but you know the uh, encryption is fine with you know your if you can satisfy your data privacy. But there are certain uh, you know, contractual obligation where they say the TD key or the key has to be also managed by the company that we are uh, you know let's say your company is hosting data. But in case of SQL, the TD the encryption key is managed by Microsoft. So you may not you know that will fall apart. That will not fulfill your privacy requirement. But if your requirement is to have data encrypted, to have in the same region, that will fulfill your privacy requirement. And still, you know, Microsoft is not supporting bring your own key for SQL TD at least today. I don't know in future it will change. Yeah, I agree. So Neeraj, what I'm trying to say is that uh, just to think I have a requirement today that uh, data has to be in our Indian boundary. So in Azure SQL, we can go only with SCI application, am I right? We are not having a control that we can select a data. So today. you need to, no, 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 no. You need to sign up for Azure subscription in India. That's what I said. I am not an expertise. I haven't gotten a chance to work on the India. India is a different subscription altogether. But if you have India subscription, then you have three locations. You have Chennai, you have Pune, you have Mumbai. These three data centers. Chennai and Pune is what their main. Mumbai is a stop cap arrangement. So you need different subscription altogether. That's a different all. That will confuse people, you know, India thing. Yeah, sure. So what is this uh, stop cap rule from some you use it? Sorry for that. I didn't, I'm not aware about that. What is that? Can you repeat your question? Sorry. Yeah, you told that uh, Chennai and uh, Chennai and Pune are of same type. Mumbai sometimes you use it. So, so, so Microsoft, uh, just hold on. Okay, so if you look at it, uh, uh, regions. So let's come down. In in India, you see, right? So you you have uh, these are the regions. So you have Central India, which is Pune. West India is Mumbai. And South India is Chennai. So for Microsoft, uh, and this is not official statement, but uh, they're saying that you know you should utilize South India. I was working on another project, and that's where I got to hear this from person. And your strategic site should be uh, Pune and Chennai. So your Chennai could be primary, and the Pune could be secondary. And Mumbai is like. Uh, something they're saying stop cap, but uh, you can utilize any three. But you know they're saying obviously for DR purpose you will need one and secondary side. So primary side could be your depending on location. So Chennai could be primary and secondary could be Pune. And you don't see this because there is a separate uh, subscription you need for India. And to be honest, I don't have really deep insight into it because I'm not working on India subscription. You know I'm working on global Azure. And in Global Azure, you don't see uh, India. In fact, you know, when we were creating, we didn't see India at all. So, but if you have subscription from India, then you can see this. And I don't have a subscription, so I really don't know, you know how this will work out, but that's what I said. It will be very difficult for us to take an example of India. So let's say, for example, if, if I had a data privacy requirement and you know I'm sitting in US, so I can use any of these reasons. And I can have my past SQL, you know, in East US, and my secondary replica in East US too, which will satisfy the in-country data storage requirement, right? And every Azure has a paired region, so every region has a sister region. So, like, you know, anything happens, Microsoft fails over to that region. That's called paired region. So that paired region, you know, uh, is is you should keep in mind when you're. Uh, you know, designing your solution because that's how naturally Microsoft will fail over in case there 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 is a problem with their data center in Azure. So, and that's that's a good strategy. You know, when you're designing a solution with uh, uh, DR. 
look at it. So Microsoft, each Microsoft has, you know, regional paired. So one region is paired to another region, which is called uh, paired region. So if you look at North America has North Central US as a pair. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, North Central US has South Central. East US is West US. East US two is US Central. So similarly, it goes on. So UK West has UK South. These are the paired regions that you have. So when you will design a DR, Let's say you are in Asia, you will say Southeast Asia and East Asia, which is, I think this is Singapore, this is Hong Kong. China is a national cloud, uh, so it doesn't come global. Uh, it's like, you know, autonomous own cloud. Uh, Australia, you will have Australia East and Australia South as Victoria and Melbourne, I think. Uh, India, you have Central India and South India. That's what he was referring to, right? So this is the paired region I was talking about. And that's why Microsoft said that Mumbai, uh, is a stop. South India is Chennai, Central India is Pune. That's what we saw. Correct? Yeah, it is. So, yeah, so I mean, for data. Sorry, go ahead. So, in this we can see uh, what would uh, Mumbai will not come over there. This I'm trying to understand. Yeah, so let me just have this another time. I'll go back. So you look at it, right? So South India was Chennai and Central India was Pune. Uh, West India is, is, is your Mumbai. So now Mumbai, you will not make use because they're not in the paired region. If you look at it, what is the paired region for India? Central India, which is Pune and South India, which means, let's say Microsoft has a failure in Chennai data center, complete data center is down. They will naturally fail over to Pune. Now their infrastructure fails over, but you have designed a solution, you know, which which is failing over in Mumbai. So then you have a split infrastructure now, and that's why you know Microsoft. Now it makes sense why they said that Mumbai is a stopgap. So you will keep this paired region in mind when you're designing a DR solution. It's very important, very critical because uh, obviously you can have DR in any any other region apart from this, but. Think from Microsoft perspective, if Microsoft has any problem in their, let's say due to disaster, you know, uh, flood hits Chennai. So, and data center is down. So basically Microsoft has internal replication, everything set up to fail over to Pune. So from Pune, you can operate, but your DR strategy didn't consider that and you put it in Mumbai. So, you know, your storage account has failed over to uh, Chennai, but you know, uh, your compute and all those uh, you didn't keep in mind and you were putting it in Pune. So rather than what you will have is you will have all your script, everything ready to provision in Pune, your compute, so that you can start utilizing the failed over storage accounts. Okay, so Neeraj, it's really very useful uh, so you told, uh, you told Azure paired regions I understood properly, which is from Pune, which is from Pune to Chennai. So, yeah. uh, so this calls and uh, Mumbai will call single infrastructure. What do you use for Mumbai? Yeah, Mumbai, you will. <laughs> that's what I said. Mumbai is uh, even I don't understand uh, the reason. It could be like you know, if you have users locally in Mumbai or even the Chennai, uh, the Pune should be fine. But uh, you will use it. <laughs> A third DR site. <laughs> so, in case both the sites are down and you want to have the third one, you know, something like that. So, I cannot think of any use case, but usually, when, when I design a solution, I keep this period region in mind. Okay. Uh, but so you my, can have a like, you know, a secondary of, cold. Yeah, my question is what is the opposite word for the period regions? You have used for Mumbai now. I'm just trying to understand it. The name, basically. A name, I don't know. A standalone site? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, so coming back to networking, right? So this is what uh, these two configuration that you can do, unit configuration and hybrid connection with Strickland. A hybrid uses BizTalk and uh, uh, you know this will make use of BizTalk. It will make use of point to site VPN. Okay. 
So moving on to the next, uh, here you have uh, different options. So let's say you want to, uh, you know, change your uh, service plan. You can come over here and you can change your plan. So let's say if I decide to downgrade it, upgrade it, you can do so from here, uh, which is which is vertical scaling. So scale up is, you know, if you want to scale up, so your uh, CPU and memory utilization will go up. Uh, basically, scale out, it will, you know, create your, as I said, uh, you can have multiple instances. This is where you will set your auto scaling. I think we have standards, so uh, so basic, so probably it won't have. But you know, here you can specify uh, that how many instances you want. It can create it. Then you can also set up, uh, you know, different parameters based on that. It will automatically uh, increase the instance. Now, in this case, auto scaling is not there. That's why we have to set up manually. But if you had auto scaling, you can say that hey, CPU utilization is eighty percent for one hour. Please spin up another instance. So then you have you know two servers to take workload of you. And then you can say that hey, if the CPU utilization is twenty percent for a consistent one to two hours, I want to bring down so that I save money on the cost. That you can do it. So this is this is where auto scaling comes in the picture, and for that you need uh, basically uh, standard or uh, no, premium. So you see auto scaling option here. Say so in the standard you will have auto scale. And you cannot scale up to 10 but if you look at in the basic i don't have uh, it's manual scale right so i can manually scale manually i can do it but uh, i cannot configure it system to read it and configure the auto scaling for me i cannot do it uh, so this is scale up uh, if you want to increase vertical you want to increase the core sizes scale out instance counts uh, this is this is uh, I think this is for DevOps. So I really don't want to get into, but you know you can do uh, you can security credit with the uh, what tin foil security, which really I don't need. Let's come to web jobs. And Neil, I have some questions about that scaling part. Sure. Yeah. So basically, when we are doing the vertical scaling, so do we require to have a downtime, or we can just go ahead and do that? Uh, that's a good question. I need to find out whether it will result in a, a downtime or not. Let's see. Let's do it now. Okay. So I'm where I'm in the basic, and let's bring it this guy down to. I'll bring it up to. And meanwhile, can somebody hit this website? I will test it. See if it is down. And where is it? my chat? Chat is here. Okay, so here that website while I'm doing this activity. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this fellow. Or why not do this standard one? This one, I'll take this guy. This is giving me ATM. Can you hit now? Oh, I can hit it. Now, but it's still up. Oh, so it was so quick, so, and that's why. So yeah, it looks like you don't have any downtime. Did you hit the website? Yes, Neeraj, it's working fine. Okay. So, Neeraj, is there a way you can, uh, rather than testing out with the web, we can ping this server and see whether there is any fraction of downtime? Uh, no, so this is a shared infrastructure. So you have, you know, you cannot, it's a Microsoft managed infrastructure. So ping, they will not respond to the ping. No, internally, uh, let's say you have your own network or internally you can try to, Ping this uh, server and see. No, you you can you can do HTTP ping to find out whether this you know not regular ping but HTTP ping path uh, HTTP ping is there which will let you know the website is alive or not. And Microsoft uses that uh, different Azure Traffic Manager 
ATM is one which uses that to keep health alive. Check it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think Neeraj, this is Vivek. So I don't think it will create a downtime because of, uh, like we are also a very big consumer of IAS and pass and we're never enable the scaling and all, right? Yeah. Because it uses virtual machines and other stuff. So it like keep data replication. It will happen only when your data replication is there, right? It will point to one server. When you migrate it, it will point to another server. And then that is how it works. Yeah, so and then, like you know, said uh, I thought it will not, but you know, I just wanted to test it. So yeah, so to answer your question, Prayas, there won't be any downtime scaling up. So I can now let me scale down once again. So I will come here. So let's go to shared one. Let's see. Yeah, no downtime. So, Neeraj, I do have a second question on the similar only. So, do we yeah. require vertical always as a manual or it can be done automatically also? Vertical manual <laughs> that you have to decide. But the that's why you know they, they have given you auto scaling where you can create multiple instances. Yeah, you are right, right. but so, you have some limitations in, suppose due to our uh, uh, the horizontal is not working, and now it, we are forced to go with vertical. So vertical can be done in an automated way or not, the way we are doing for horizontal. So can we do uh, it in a vertical survey, automated way, or we need to have to go with the manual way, what we did it right now? Yeah, it's a changing of pricing to you, right? So I don't know. You can run a script. You can script it. That's not a problem. You can write, write a PowerShell script. You fire it up and do it. But Microsoft Portal doesn't give you that kind of functionality, which you will get in case of auto scaling. So, for example, here you have auto scaling, you know, for horizontal. But vertical Microsoft, I don't see that Microsoft gives you that. So certainly I. I don't see that uh, possibility, but you can write your own code. Uh, you can write your own PowerShell script, which uh, can do those kind of stuff for you. OK, I have another last question on this topic. So basically, uh, when we are going with the uh, horizontal scaling, sure. so just to think if we have a mm -hmm. big application there, and currently the number is 10, and we have given it if it's more than 80% of uh, utilization for maybe 5 minutes or 10 minutes, we wanted to have uh, maybe 40 yeah. percent created right so probably four is going to create a, to create it so how much time it will be taking it do you have any idea regarding this so probably just for cooling time or something so, uh see when we created instance it was instant right within 30 seconds it created for us it didn't take that really long so in in my opinion it will be you know around under one under a minute or so Okay. You saw it. Okay. When we created it, was, it was very quick. Okay. But I, I so, don't have definite answer, official answer, you know, how much time will it take to spin up those extra instances. Okay. Sure. So I had one practical question also that just to think that uh, currently I have uh, too much of load, maybe, maybe around 90%, and my website mm -hmm. is crying because of the 10 instances. And now I have written a rule that if it is more than 80%, you create 40% extra, which is four. Four will be taking some time. If it is taking one minute of time also to create it, then my mm -hmm. entire website will be getting hanged because it's almost 10%. Do you have any idea? How so so instead of instead of 90%, you, you lower the threshold to 80%. And instead of four, you lower it to two. And then create another one at 85%, say another two instance fire. Then create another one for ninety percent. Uh, fire one more instance. Right. Okay. So you can go in ladder. So you can say, yeah. hey, when you eat eighty percent for five minutes, just spin up only two more instances. And you know, again, you hit eighty-five percent. Spin up one more instance. So two plus one, three total now. Then you say, now you hit ninety percent. You spin up another one. So that way you can you can have a ladder approach. Yeah, very good approach. Thanks for that. So that will, you know, solve and also uh, bring down your cost also. 
Okay, coming to web job. So uh, I don't know if uh, so web job is something you want to do some processing. You want to have your own script, which you know does some uh, process for you. you. Can have PowerShell script uh, doing some uh, work uh, in a worker. Uh, work on your uh, data you can have like for example a PowerShell script which converts the thumbnail or any kind of processing that you want to offload off the website so on the website it's only user interface you don't want to perform any calculation any computation so if you want that computation to be done you can you know add the web job so web job is you can add PowerShell script you can there, there you know many things which is supported so if you look at you can upload the files Okay, so I mean, it supports PowerShell, it supports uh, .NET code, and you know other uh, supported uh, languages that you can use. And basically, what happen is you can uh, specify when to run and what, uh, depending on what you have configured in that web job, it will go ahead and perform the task for you. So it's like you know, if you have any computation intensive task, you will not code that in your web interface rather than you know you will come over here in the web job and you know publish it here so that that essentially will take the load off of your web server and it will perform those computations in the back side uh, then push i think it's for the uh, notification hub uh, notification hub is a service for microsoft if you want to uh, send out any notification to your users in, in a, so it can utilize that notification hub to send out any kind of uh, uh, notification it's a mobile push notification and honestly speaking i haven't used it uh, but you know this is something which is more geared towards the developer and sending out any kind of notification so if a user registers it and then you want to say that hey send out a notification that integration you can set up here uh, mysql this is i think more you know if anybody wants to use uh, mysql instead of sql so in that case you can create mysql in app again i have not really looked deeper into it because i haven't come across any use case but uh, this is something you can explore uh, when you have time uh what else okay so app service editor so this is something you know which uh, so if you are a lightweight you don't have visual studio and you want to you know make some quick changes to your website that we had uh, you can make those changes here this is so for example currently if you look at this this website is coming like this so i'm going to change this guy and make those lightweight changes obviously uh, you will use your visual studio to make that <clears throat> This is the settings of what I'll do is. Right, so if I say save. Now if I come here and if I refresh it, you see, right? It has just got changed. So, you know, if you want to make some quick editing, if you have one page, two page HTML file, you can do uh, through the app service editor. So it's, it's still in preview, but, you know, you want to make some quick changes, anything. So, for example, uh, let's see what else we want to make change. Come here. This is good to your app quick start. So I will say. Um, And it's instant, right? So I make a change, it gets saved, and say it's saved, and I hit here. See, it just got changed, right? So uh, this is uh, essentially a lightweight uh, web editor, you know, where you can edit your uh, 
single page, it will show you all the pages that you have, you know, essentially. Coming back, uh, these are all other options. I really don't want to get into everything. These are some course. This is more from application developer point of view. It's called cross origin resource sharing. This is a protocol wherein one website, one domain shares data with another domain, which praise probably you will know better than me. <laughs> so those settings you can configure here. Uh, there is something to, you know, uh, you can also uh, configure the diagnostic if you really want to. Um, you know, if you're on this website, you need extra diagnostic. Uh, you can come here in diagnostic as a service and look at uh, different uh, error messages or anything that has occurred on your website. That's more from administration purposes. So, you know, depending on what you want to turn on, you can, you can start and then it will create a memory dump or HTTP log for you and then you know generate the session. But something you may be interested, you can look at the live HTTP traffic. See, I hit that website so I can see my IP should be listed there. Hold on. Come on. Loading, loading. Can I have data, please? <laughs> ah. Okay, one, uh, let's see. Come on, give me the data. Oh boy. So just to update I don't it. It's taking. Yeah, so why it will take forever, it may take some time. Just to update the team, uh -huh. we do have an option called application events. So this is very much required for developer. I will give you the simplest example that I have created .NET application is working perfectly into my on-premise or my Azure VM. But when I have launched it as a web app and it is not working, right? So definitely developer wanted to debug it to our code level. So we can use the Azure application events over here and we can attach to our code and we can enable the debug option into our Azure web app and we can go to our code level and we can see the way we see them on device. So it's a wonderful things to use it for the developer. Yeah, that's good. That's good point. So I think, you know, that uh, uh, in the Azure event, I mean, sorry, the the event that, you know, you is talking about is here. You can see application events. So you can come over here and have a look the events, which is so it has not abated, but like if you had to, you, you will see over here. Uh, diagnostic log, uh, I think hey, this is where you will turn on different kind of like log, uh, logging. Um, so for example, application logging file system, you can turn it on uh, for the blog, for the storage, or all, all this in a kind of uh, logging you can enable here. This is this is one a new thing application insight. So Microsoft has something called uh, application insight, uh, which is application monitoring. So you can you know connect your application monitoring uh, uh, with help of application insight. So you can if you have a you know application insight, you want to monitor this, you you'll pay for it basically. But so then you can connect with this application insight. Which is a service software as a service from Microsoft offering. Uh, what else? Yeah, so this is the data connection where you'll set up, you know, kind of uh, connectivity between your web app and the database sources. You can add over here. Uh, so you can specify what kind of data connection will it be to the SQL database, or you want to go to connect to data uh, to storage account. So in case of database, you will. Select your 
database if you don't have uh, let's see i have or not no i don't have so basically you will uh, you will create one sql database and then you know connect uh, that database to this web app so basically it can go and write in your sql database and you know perform the operation that you wish uh, that your web app can do with and that's where you have to specify the connection string username and password to connect to that website uh, to the to that uh, database server I think you know we are way above over <laughs> a lot of time so uh, now I will stop and you know, I'll take questions for next five or so minute anybody has any questions on web app or anything we covered in the past Naresh, you know, I have one question is suppose I scale up uh, to suppose uh, to increase my um, the machine virtual machine or increase the resources and i use it for at least 15 yeah. days but that subscription value is yeah. for per month so it will be calculated on 15 days basis or they'll charge per month ah uh, no 15 days okay for the time that you use okay so even if it is for uh, 15 days one hour you will be charged for 15 days one hour okay. not for 16 days and in, i think most of the time it's per minute billing Uh, not even in a uh, uh, I know VPN gateway is hourly, but some of the services are per minute So this is this this you see USD per month is estimated that doesn't mean that you know you will be charged for the entire month uh, It's a giving calculation but considering you will run it to 24 cross 7 That's what okay. the charge is showing okay. Any other question? Yeah, Neeran, somewhere I got a chance to look into that uh, the pay and use will be there planning to remove it the way you told that minute billing and all. So do you have any idea regarding this? What pay and use? What Sorry. I'm trying to say that uh, currently mm -hmm. we are using it as per our use, we are paying it as you told. We are using for one uh -huh. minute, we are going to pay for one minute. We are not paying for a uh, complete uh, month or whatever. So that somewhere I got yeah. an article that people they are telling that pay by use option probably Azure is planning to deactivate it. Uh, I don't know. The, I don't remember. You know, Maybe if you can send me that article, probably I can comment on that. It was more for CSPs. It was for, if I remember that article was talking about the cloud service providers and they won't be able to somehow I don't know that was related to CSP yeah but so this is this has nothing to do with the billing billing will be per minute yeah so billing will be per minute yeah definitely I agree with you this I never saw any for anything in link from the Microsoft site but in LinkedIn people they are selling that they are telling that they are going to stop yeah it. so that yeah, I remember yes that was for the CSPs that now pay as you go you will not bite from Microsoft so when they say pay as you go subscription type so in that case you know you will only buy enterprise enrollment account from Microsoft but if you need pay as you go for you know you're doing POC you know all those stuff from your personal pocket now you have to buy it from CSP that's what I think that could was it was not related to uh, pay uh, per hour or per minute billing that is that has to be uh, same so what is this csp i didn't get to what is the context they have set it so please explain us so again you know i i don't have complete detail but it's like they said if you need pay as you go which means you don't have enterprise account uh, you want to sign up personally in that case, Microsoft will not offer that now. You have to go through their cloud service provider like Rackspace or you know some other third-party vendors which is selling Microsoft, which is reseller of Microsoft something. So that's where you'll have to buy the, your P as you go. That's what I understood. But you know, as I said, I don't have comprehensive detail about it. I don't have complete detail about it. Okay, okay, sure. So that was more from like, you know, uh, personal subscription or where 
your month on month basis so that the enterprise agreement is yearly or sometimes three years you know, depending on what kind of enterprise agreement that you have so your billing is monthly but you know the enterprise agreement is for one year and you give a commitment that i will use two million dollar worth of uh, your compute or you know your resources and microsoft gives you discount 40 percent 45 percent depending on what commitment you have given so that you will continue to get from Microsoft, but I think it was for smaller chunk. They were saying uh, you have to go to CSP. That that was what PAC go. Okay, Nikhil. So some of the links probably you forgot to paste it. So one or two links you missed it. So paste it. Okay, I see. So Azure regions, then paired regions. Okay. All right. So if nobody, uh, any closing thoughts, comments? Hey, I know. Hey, here is one question. Hey, yeah. Can can you just give a uh, recap of what things you have covered? Just just high level. Just these are topics you have covered. I just I think joined 30 40 minutes late. Just from my knowledge, you know what are the things you know? Yeah. So I think last time you know uh, you remember we covered all the V units. So I just you know, what what we have done. Then after that uh, today we delved much deeper into uh, web app, uh, which is the hosting platform from Microsoft. Uh, to host your website. This is hosting as a service uh, and we created a web app. Uh, we we you know try to access it from our URL. We looked at the different uh, configuration of web app and uh, we also uh, made some changes to the code uh, which which was deployed on the web app. And basically, you know, it, it was totally around uh, the web app. The web web okay. All right, uh, I think you know we are way over the allocated time. Thank you guys for joining. And again, you know, next week. Thank you. One minute. Uh, what, please say, yeah. do please share the diagram which you are showing it to us. Uh, sure, sure, sure. I will. Yeah, sure. I will do that. I will post that link uh, in the the chat. Sure. Thanks for your time and for everyone. We had a nice discussion. Lot to learn. Hey, no problem, Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you.